In this lesson, we are going to determine the equation of trig functions. To determine the equation of a trig function, you need to determine which of the four transformations that we had a look at in the previous few lessons have been applied to the specific graph. For this, you need the knowledge of the three basic graphs, and with each one, you will focus on very specific coordinates and values. Firstly, you need to be able to determine where the midline of the specific graph is. This midline will determine the D value. To determine the A value, you firstly need to decide whether the graph has been reflected around the x-axis or not. To do this, you need to know the form of each graph with respect to the midline. The sin graph starts off on the midline, a maximum, a minimum, and then back to the midline. So, if the graph starts with a minimum and then a maximum going back to the midline, it will have a negative A value. The cos graph starts with a maximum value, moves to a minimum and goes back to a maximum value. And then, of course, if this graph starts with a minimum, moving to a maximum and then back to a minimum, it will be a negative A value. The tan graph starts on the midline with an increasing graph or curve. And of course, if this is a decreasing graph from the midline, it will be a negative A value. To determine the rest of the A value for the sin and the cos graph, you need to determine the amplitude. This is the maximum displacement up as well as down from this specific midline. For the standard sin and cos graph, this A value is 1. For the tan graph, the A value is determined by the well-known 45-1 coordinate. This point is exactly in between the x-intercept and the asymptote, and you will focus on the y value of that coordinate to get your A value. The B value influences the period of the graph. Therefore, you will need to determine the number of degrees it takes to complete one full wave. This value can then be divided by the original period to determine the B value. The C value indicates a horizontal shift. To determine this shift, you will choose a specific coordinate on the original graph and compare it to the new graph and determine how much the X value has moved. Let's have a look at a few examples. Example 1. Determine the values of a and b for the given function. So here they've indicated that the transformations for this graph is the a and the b. As previously mentioned, you always start off determining where the midline is. And for this graph, the midline is still on the x-axis. To determine the a value, we now need to get the amplitude of this graph, which is the maximum displacement up or down from this midline, and that is clearly a value of 2. Therefore, we can say that the A value is 2. This A value is positive because the given graph has the same form as the original cos graph and has not been reflected. For the B value, we need to determine the period of the graph, and here one wave is completed after 180 degrees. This means that the period for this graph is 180 degrees. To determine the value of B, we then take the original period of 360 degrees and divide it by this graph's period, and that means the B value is 2. The equation for this graph will then be 2 cos of 2x. Example 2. Determine the equation of the given function. This time, they did not specify whether this is a sin or a cos graph. Because the cos graph, in reality, is simply a sin graph that has been shifted 90 degrees, you now have the choice of either determining the equation for a sin or a cos graph. This graph forms a bowl similar to the cos graph, and that is why I'm going to choose to determine the equation for a cos graph. Once again, you need to start off determining the midline. Here, the maximum value is at 0 and the minimum is at minus 2. And exactly in the middle of that will be our midline, 
at minus 1. Therefore, we can say that the D value is minus 1. For the A value, we firstly need to decide whether this is the normal form for the cos graph. For the normal cos graph, the bowl is formed downwards, and here the bowl is forming upwards, and that is why the A value will definitely be negative. The rest of the A value is determined by the amplitude, and here the maximum displacement from the midline down as well as upwards is a value of 1, and that means the amplitude is 1, which means that the A value is minus 1. For the B value, we need to determine the period of the graph. It takes this graph a full 360 degrees to complete one wave. That is the normal period of a cos graph, and therefore the B value is 1. And finally, we need to determine the C value, which means we need to determine how much this graph has shifted horizontally. For that, we focus on one specific coordinate. I'm focusing on the maximum value at an x of 0. This graph has now, however, been reflected and should have a minimum value at an x of 0. But if we go and have a look at our graph, the minimum value is now at an x value of minus 60. Therefore, this graph has shifted 60 degrees to the left. For a horizontal shift, we know that a shift in the negative direction has a positive value, and therefore the D value is positive 60. Therefore, the final equation for this function is y is equal to minus 1 cos of x plus 60 degrees minus 1. Example 3. Determine the equation of the graph in the form y is equal to a tan bx plus c. Once again, we start by determining the midline. For the tan graph, that can be done by finding the point exactly in between the two asymptotes. Here, that point is on the x-axis, and therefore the x-axis is our midline. The a value is determined by finding the coordinate exactly in between the point of inflection, which is in our case also the x-intercept, and the asymptote. Here, that coordinate is given as 32,5 and 1, and that is why the a value will be 1. This a value is positive because this is an increasing tan graph, whereas a negative a value will be for a decreasing tan graph. The B value is determined by using the period of the graph. And here the period of the graph is exactly in between two asymptotes because that is the number of degrees it takes for one wave to be completed. Here this is between minus 35 and 55, which is a distance of 90 degrees. Therefore, to calculate the B value, I take the original period of a tan graph and divide it by this specific tan graph's period to get a B value of 2. The C value once again indicates a shift that happens horizontally, and for that we need to focus on one coordinate from the original graph, and I'm going to focus on the coordinate 0, 0. This point is on the midline, and from here the graph moves up. And if I compare that to the given graph, that will be the point at 10 degrees, where the tan graph moves upwards from the midline. This means that the graph has shifted 10 degrees to the right, and when a horizontal shift is in the positive direction, the C value will always be negative, and that is why the C value here is minus 10. Here we then have a final equation of y is equal to 1 tan of 2x minus 10.